Hello everyone and welcome to the 2024 NCAA Division II Men's Soccer Selection Show. I'm your host Kit Hanley and it is an honor to be here with you tonight. Now we have some big time programs to unveil today but the depth of D2 soccer has been on display through much of conference championship season. So every matchup unveiled today has the potential to go either direction. Our bracket is comprised of course of 40 schools split into four super regions. Opening matchups begin later this week and will begin to whittle it on down until only four teams remain. Those four head to Matthews, North Carolina for the national semifinals on December 12th and the national championship just two days later. Now who gets there has a lot to do with the matchups we're bringing to you right now. So let's dive right into the bracket and start off strong with Super Region 1. The top seed belongs to none other than Charleston. The Golden Eagles avenge their only defeat of the season and beat Concord 3-1 to bring home its seventh, yeah, you heard that right, seventh consecutive MEC tournament title. Talk about dominance. The 2017 and 19 national champs have a habit of making deep runs, so it'll be interesting to see how the Golden Eagles fare. They host a first round showdown that includes New Haven. The Chargers are coming off a historic season after playing in the program's first ever any 10 title game. The team knocked off reigning national champion Franklin Pierce, but fell to Southern New Hampshire 2-1 in a Sunday afternoon battle. They returned to the tournament for the 10th time. Hello Concord, you are in. The Mountain Lions made it to the MEC title game, but fell to the Charleston Golden Eagles 3-1. But hey, shout out junior goalkeeper Nathan Scargill, who still put up a career high performance with seven stopped shots. The team landed a total of nine players on the All Mountain East Conference teams. A second round matchup will be played at Gannon. The teams Ver Orte and Herman Onberg ranked fifth and sixth in Division II total assists with 13 and 12 per game on the season. That offense gets rivaled by back-to-back -back reigning champs Franklin Pierce. Leading the pack, there Tiago Bergina, a member of the all any 10 first team. The sophomore midfielder played in all 17 games and had 13 points through three goals and seven assists. Southern New Hampshire is the two seed in this region. The Penmen had all the accolades with a league high 11 players claiming any 10 all-conference honors including player of the year, defensive player of the year, goalkeeper of the year, rookie of the year, and hey, coach of the year, becoming the first team since the five major awards started being handed out back in 1999. They welcome post to town, the Eagles, Felix Nassen, won back-to-back -back defensive player of the year and four Eagles were named to the CACC all-conference team. Next up, hello, District of Columbia, the Firebirds are feeling it, no doubt. The team clinched its first ever East Conference Championship title with a thrilling 2-1 victory against Malloy University. Mustafa Tahir sealed the Firebirds' golden fate with his game-winning goal in overtime. Hey, and by the way, it's his third of the season. Breathe easy Bloomsburg, who is dancing for just the fourth time in program history. The team featured seven different all-conference performers plus a major accolade for coach Mark Bassett, who was awarded coach of the year in the all PSAC East Conference. Felician rounds out the region in winning style. The Golden Falcons made their way to the CACC championship for the first time since 2001 and came out victorious with a 1-0 win over Post. Plus, seven Golden Falcons earned all conference honors, five of which were named to the first team. That's the most in the conference. On to our next Super Region, number two, where the top seed belongs to Limestone. The Saints took down the Bears of Lenore Rhine for the SAC title with a healthy 5-2 win, crowning the Saints back-to-back -back SAC champions. Not to mention the team's Nikolai Bertelson's nine shutouts that ranked second in Division II play. They will welcome Mars Hill to town, and the team's Peter Plogman, who was named SAC Offensive Player of the Year, Plogmund also holds the most D2 goals this season with 24. Five other players also received all SAC selections. 
A nervous wait ends for Francis Marion. Special shout out to graduate student forward John Osadoler, who scored in the third minute, and the team's defense, who helped carry the Patriots to victory against Shawan University in the Conference Carolinas title match. It was the Patriots' third title match in four years. No nerves for Clayton State, who fell 2-1 to Flagler College in the PBC title game Sunday afternoon. The defense held its ground throughout the first half of the game, only allowing a combined eight shots and will be crucial in making a run in this tournament. Converse will try to break through the defense in the opener. The Valkyries remained undefeated in conference play for the second consecutive season with five players named as all conference selections. Senior Guilherme Fontes headlining the group, taking home Conference Carolina's Defensive Player of the Year. Congratulations to him. Lynn is the two seed in this region. John Roots won his 200th game as head coach this season. Lynn won SSC Goalkeeper of the Year, SSC Defensive Player of the Year, and Sunshine State Conference Coaching Staff of the Year in 45 games. Clavero in, is 34 and 10 with 22 shutouts, a .767 save percentage and .68 goals against average. West Florida confirms its spot in this region after advancing to the GSC Championship Final for the fifth consecutive year. The Argonauts earned major conference awards with coach Bill Elliott named GSC Coach of the Year and their Keegan Lynch Co-Defensive Player of the Year. The Argonauts get PBC champs Flagler. Marcus Hedeman scored the game-winning goal, knocking down Clayton State University, and this marks the Saints' third league tournament title. Hello, Coker. The Cobras fell to the Bears of Lenore Ryan in a heartbreaker in the SAC semis. But now the team has a chance at sweet redemption in the tournament. Eight Cobras earned all SAC nods, along with sweeping three of the four individual awards and what was a record-breaking season for the squad. The Cobras' Frederick Benedicts ranked first overall in the division with 15 assists per game. They'll face Auburn Montgomery. AUM is coming off an electric weekend with the team bringing home its first ever GSC championship in program history. Shout out Benjamin Hoffman, who scored his ninth goal of the season, giving the Warhawks a 1-0 victory over the Argonauts of West Florida. Now we're going to take a break here before we get into the division number three. I'm going to take a sip of water and we'll be right back. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of freaking out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed. Welcome back to the 2024 Division II Men's Soccer Selection Show. Two regions have been released with top seeds Charleston and Limestone highlighting the 20 teams announced so far. We still have half of the bracket to share with you, so let's get back to Super Region 3 with a top seed belonging to Saginaw Valley. The Cardinals won their second GLIAC tournament title in three years Sunday afternoon, taking the match in PKs over Roosevelt. Now here's what head coach Lewis Barrow had to say about the win. He said, quote, when it comes to penalties, it's all about who can control their emotions most. So we spoke before the penalties about slowing our heart rate down, composing ourselves, picking our spots, being true, being confident, and hitting them with conviction. And the lads did that fantastically. Now they host a first round matchup that starts with Southern Nazarene, who secured their fourth consecutive GAC MIAA regular season championship with a 2-0 win over Newman. Congrats to the Storm. They'll now face Roger State, who racked up the all GAC MIAA awards. The Hillcats were home to the midfielder of the year, defensive player of the year, newcomer of the year, and coach of the year for the third time for coach Derek Larkin. Congratulations to all. 
A second round matchup will be played at Tiffin, who is returning for an eighth time and seek the program's first NCAA tournament win. The Dragons took home their third consecutive regular season title in the GMAC with a dramatic 2-1 win at Cedarville, and they're not done yet. They'll be tested by Lewis in what is a 12th NCAA tournament berth for the Flyers. After winning both the GLVC regular season and tournament championships with a PK win over Merrillville. McKendry is the two seed in this region. The Bearcats sophomore goalkeeper Christian Erluf was awarded the Great Lakes Valley Conference Goalkeeper of the Year and top Division II in shutouts with 13 on the season. The defense carries this program back to the NCAA tournament for just the third time in school history. Hello Davenport, the Panthers freshman Easton Lopez was named the GLIAC Freshman of the Year and first team all GLIAC. Davenport's fifth year midfielder George DeVoe was also recognized as an honorable mention all GLIAC in back-to-back -back seasons. And get this, the defensive anchor has a career total of 7,496 minutes played on the pitch, the second most in program history. The Panthers get the 2024 GAC Tournament Champions of Fort Hayes State. This is the team's 10th appearance in the NCAA Tournament in just the 14th year of the program's existence. Congratulations. Welcome back to Maryville. How y'all doing? This program hasn't missed the field since its first appearance in 2017, and history was made for the Saints as their Mason crew became the first ever GLVC Offensive Player of the Year in program history. You're taking a look at some highlights there on your screen. Crew was one of six total all GLVC honorees for the Saints. You love to see it. And Finley is the last team to unveil in this region. The Oilers took down Kentucky Wesleyan University to capture the Oilers' first ever men's soccer conference championship. Oh, and by the way, it was also the team's first GMAC championship game appearance in school history. So a lot going on there. Congratulations to the Oilers. That's awesome. Hey, we have one final region to go, Super Region 4, and our top seed is Colorado State University Pueblo. Hello to the Thunderwolves, and an extra congratulations is in order to CSU Pueblo took home the RMAC Tournament Championship for the second year in a row with a 2-1 win over Lewis. You're taking a look there at your screen at some highlights now. The Thunderwolves, Jose Bustamante, scored two goals in less than eight minutes in the second half to propel the pack to victory. Point Loma will come to town after winning a straight second Pac West title. The Sea Lions brought home several conference postseason awards as well. Headlining those accolades was forward Elijah Langford, who was named Pac West Player of the Year. Defender Ryan Doyle took home Pac West Defender of the Year. And coach Phil Wolf, who was voted Pac, Pac West Coach of the Year. Congratulations to them. Hey, end the drama for Western Oregon in what was a season of some major firsts. The team's first NCAA appearance in just its third year as a program, its first GNAC men's soccer title, and its first national rankings in school history. Let's keep the momentum rolling. You're taking a look at some of their highlights from this season. Hello to Cal State Dominguez Hills, who claimed the CCAA championship with a dramatic penalty shootout over Cal Poly Panoma. Congratulations to the Toros on what is their eighth CCAA championship. Cal State LA will pay a visit. The Golden Eagles coming off a fruitful season with four players picking up all CCAA honors, including the top defensive honor for Andrew Portis. Portis was named the CCAA Defender of the Year. He also leads the team in game-winning goals with four on the season. Midwestern State, what is up? They're next. Make it five straight trips to the tournament for the undefeated champs of the Lone Star Conference. Johan Juarez and Josh Mila scored second half goals in a 2-1 victory over St. Mary's, bringing home the ninth conference championship in program history. Now leading the team was Mayor Escobar, who assisted on Josh Mila's game-winning goal, and he was named tournament MVP. Big welcome to Cal Poly Pomona, who had nine different student athletes receive all conference recognition 
tying a program high and the most in the conference. And to top it all off, head coach Matt O'Sullivan was named CCAA Coach of the Year for the first time in his career. Congratulations, coach. They'll face the newcomers of Westmont, who received a bid into the tournament by winning the Pac West title in the school's first year as full members of the NCAA. Take a look at your screen there. Let's go. The highlights you're seeing are the first, second, and third goals from Westmont's come from behind 3 2 win against Fresno Pacific in the Pac West Championship. What a game! Final two here, we're getting on down to the end. We'll head to UC Colorado Springs, who have established a new program record with 14 wins and possibly and hopefully counting. The Mountain Lions finished the season with the number three national ranking in the United Soccer Coaches Poll, which is the highest in program history, by the way. Soren Russell was also named the RMAC Goalkeeper of the Year. Here we go, Fort Lewis rounds out the field of 40. Congrats to the Skyhawks for the second year in a row. The Skyhawks took home the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Freshman of the Year Award. Fabrizio Aguilera earned the honor with five goals and one assist through the regular season. And there you have it, all 40 teams still alive in pursuit of a national championship. Those eight first round games kick off Friday of this week with each region down to four teams by the end of the weekend. Following super regional play after the holiday, the final four teams head to the Sportsplex at Matthews in Matthews, North Carolina for the national semifinals. And of course, the championship. And you can catch all of those games on December 12th and 14th right here on NCAA.com. It has been a pleasure to be with you guys tonight, and I hope you have a lovely week. Good luck to all. If you're not here for Fandom 101, you're in the wrong class. Here, we learn the fundamentals of fanology, the basics of bringing the noise, and the physics of freaking out. Your path to fan mastery begins here. It's all part of the curriculum. The NCAA championships. Attendance is encouraged. Passion is mandatory. Buy your seats today at NCAA.com slash tickets. Class dismissed.